Hey guys, and welcome to this brand new video. Today, we're gonna talk about the luxury brand there is, and this is obviously Hermes. But before we talk about Hermes, I wanna actually talk about a totally different topic, and this is inflation. And you might be wondering, why on earth shall I listen to that guy talking about inflation right now? And I couldn't agree more. But if you stick on for a few secs, I'll explain to you why inflation and their mess have a connection and why it's really important to know that connection. So let's start with defining what inflation is. And inflation is an increases in prices and that causing the value of money to decrease over time. And this is totally natural because you see you have a small business and over time you increase prices so you make more because, well, your suppliers charge more over time and that's all right. But what happened in recent times is that inflation more or less went out of control. And especially in the US, here in Germany as well, or, I mean, we are in the ECB and they don't give a fuck about it. But it's another topic. Back to inflation. And that issue with inflation that is causing lots of stocks to have a really big problem, like the tech stocks in recent days. But there are other stocks that highly profit from inflation. And these stocks are banks, for example. Why banks? Because if interest rates rise, to keep up with inflation or to balance inflation, and you balance inflation with interest rates, you will see that banks will make more money over time. And that's really nice for banks, like JP Morgan, like Goldman. And the second group of stocks that profit from inflation are consumer brands. For example, Coke or Pepsi or Altria, because these brands or these companies they can pretty easily increase the prices they charge for the products because we are more or less dependent on them. I mean, if you're hooked on nicotine, you need the cigarettes of Altria. If you really love Coke over Pepsi, what I do, you buy your Coke regardless of the price. So consumer brands, also church and white, they profit from inflation. And the last group, and that's why I said it makes sense to stick on that topic inflation is luxury brands because luxury brands basically make their own inflation. And you might be saying, what earth has that to do with inflation? How do they make their own inflation? Because you see, a company like Hermes, they are so prestige and they have such a strong branding and such a targeted customer group that they know they can more or less charge anything for their products and people will buy it. You see, if you spend, for example, these 5,700 bucks for that coat, you wouldn't mind if it costs 6,000. Because if you are in the middle class, like I would consider myself, you or I would have to save many monthly incomes to buy that coat. But if wearing such a coat is totally normal for you, it doesn't matter whether the price is 5,700 or 6,000 or 6,500. And Hermes could increase the price of that coat straight away and they would still sell it because their group of customers are people like this one. And another thing with Hermes is they're mainly known for their bags, like these ones around here. And what you can see, they all are pretty expensive. And if you spend so much money on a bag as a customer, you don't care about the price being twice as much even through this is 20,000 bucks or even more. So this is what I, or this is where I wanted to connect inflation and a mess because you need brands that have pricing power 
to keep up with inflation. And Hermes is the definition of pricing power. So from here, let's just go straight into their investor presentation. And then I can explain you a few more things about Hermes and why I think Hermes, as the other brands in this luxury series, should be a part of every long-term investor. So see you on the screen and send. Before we go on with the video, I really would like to ask you whether you could just leave a subscription if you like the video so far. Check out my other videos. If you don't like the video, don't subscribe. Just dislike the video or watch some other stuff. Enjoy the day and let's go. Hey guys, so here we are at my uh, computer and what you can see is the combined general meeting of Hermes. And this is on the 4th May 2021. It's the latest one I've been able to find. And the first thing I want to show you is this graph because what we can see here is responsible and sustainable development, uninterrupted job creation. So if I see something like that, I'm really happy because this tells me that this brand, in this case Hermes, is creating new jobs. And the company is only creating new jobs and almost doubling its workforce in the last nine years if it's a really solid ongoing thing. No company would increase their workforce if they are not making any money. And what we can see is the majority of people work in production, followed by sales and then support functions. If we break down the workforce by regions, we can see France is definitely dominant, followed by Asia Pacific, except from Japan, then we have Europe, except France, Americans, and Japan. And what they do is, Hermes, they have these 51 production sites, and here we can see them. And in all of these production sites, the 51 in France, they produce their goods and they have 13 production sites outside of France, but the majority of their products is produced in France. And from here, let's just go straight into the 2020 activity. And first of all, we can see the revenue reached 6.4 billion. And this is a reducement of the revenue by 6%. So here's a breakdown of the revenue by regions. And we can see the Asia region or Asia Pacific, except Japan, is definitely the biggest area where Hermes is making money. And this is obviously boosted by Japan, uh, sorry, by China. And we can see Asia Pacific, they're actually the only region where Hermes was able to grow in the year 2020 compared to 2019. So here we can see the revenue by area 2020 in orange and 2019 in black. And we can see that Asia Pacific is still the biggest area with the revenue and is growing by quite a margin. The rest more or less stay the same. Now let's have a look at the revenue by sector. So first off, we have leather goods and celery. So again, what I said, Hermes is so well known for their leather goods and especially for their bags. For example, the Birkin bag is a really, really rare bag and you have to put yourself on a list and wait up to five, sometimes even 10 years to get one. So you can't just walk in a store, say here, I've got 40 grand and I wanna buy one. Now you have to put yourself on the list and wait really long. And this is one of the reasons why I'm actually really scared of revenue growth by the brand or by the company Hermes. Because as soon as Hermes starts to selling lots of these bags and not keeping the quantity really low, the product is not desirable anymore. No one gives a fuck if you can really have it. For example, maybe you know Supreme. I was a really Supreme fanboy. The only reason why I really wanted it because it was so rare. And it's the same with Hermes. As long as they keep the product really rare, but increase the price of the product, I'm not having no problem. But if revenue growth comes from selling more and more products, I'm really scared because that would basically destroy the whole brand or the whole reputation or the whole prestige and the whole desire Hermes has. 
So revenue by sector, again, here we can see this in a really lovely pie chart. Now we take a look at the 2020 consolidated financial statement. And first of all, we can see the revenue here, 6.389 billion, then the cost of goods, then the gross margin of 4.376 billion. So guys, you can see that ridiculously high margin, but obviously we have to subtract all of these points here and with an operating margin on operating income of 2.073 billion. Again, this is less than we had in 2019, but is all right. I mean, 2020 was a really fucked up year. We had Corona. And especially with the lockdowns, brands like Hermes had a really, really hard time. And if we go on with the consolidated income statement, we can see that we have to discount a few more things. And then we come or we end up with a net income attributable to owners of the parent company. So of Hermes of 1.385 billion. And that's quite lovely. Another thing that I love operating investments. So I love it if companies invest. So first of all, they invest in stores and distribution, then product and real estate. All in all, they invested 448 million. Totally fine with that. If investment is needed, you should do it. What we can see here, the restricted cash flow statement. So the only things that I really care about is the adjusted free cash flow. So we have a free cash flow of almost a billion dollars. And we can see that half of that is paid out in dividends. So there's a lot of money left in the company. So they're not paying out too much. And another thing that we can see here up is they have 4.9 billion euros in net cash. So they're not having that. And guys, you know, I love it when a company is net cash positive or has more cash than debt. And I really love that here with Hermes because again, if you have debt and you come in a really bad or fucked up situation, life is easier when you don't have the debt. So before we go on with the first quarter 2021 sales, I want to show you the revenue of the last years. So if we take a look at that, so again, it's Statista here, the German website, but Umsat means revenue. And what we can see the revenue over time is lovely increasing or has been increased by the brand of Hermes. And I assume it will go on and keeps increasing. Then the next thing here, the profit, same story. It has been growing ever since Hermes was founded basically. And I assume again, it is going to grow or it will keep growing in the future. I don't see a reason why it should not grow in the future. One last thing here, the revenue by region. And we can see that Asia Pacific has basically been the dominant player when it comes to revenue since 2009. So all in all, as long as people in China have money or in Asia Pacific, but especially in China have money to spend on the goods that Hermes is offering. I don't see a reason why Hermes should have a hard time, to be honest. Let's take a look at the first quarter 2021 sales. And what we can see is if you compare 2020 to 2021, we had a 44% revenue growth. Guys, that's amazing. But if we compare 2019 to 2021, which we actually should, because again, 2020 has been a really fucked up year and you can't really compare it. We still have 33% revenue growth. I mean, 33%, this isn't a growth company. It's a basic company that sells like goods you can touch. No software, no Tesla, basic goods. I mean, expensive basic goods, but yeah, I mean, you get the point. And if we take an outlook, we can see that the impact of COVID will go away over time. And as long 
as a mess keeps that reputation of unbelievable high craftsmanship of that prices way above what normal people can afford because that makes it so desirable as long as they keep the quantity of their products really low but give it a hefty a really big price tag i assume that hermes will go on and deliver and will be an amazing investment one more thing i would love to mention is hermes is a family owned business so the majority of the shares are family owned and family owned businesses mainly are made for generations to last and another thing with the hermes or with hermes and the share of hermes is there's a really low quantity of shares publicly traded because the majority of shares is owned by the family and they don't want to sell it and the other majority of the shares is owned by institutional investors who have no interest of selling these shares so only around 20 to 25 percent of all shares of Hermes are actually publicly traded and one last thing is the dividend so we can see in 2019 in 2020 we had a dividend of in 2018 of four euros and 55 and the dividend for 2021 has not been published yet but i assume there will be an increasement in the dividend and overall as i've mentioned earlier Hermes is a really solid company when it comes to the dividend so they pay out only around 50 percent of what they have in free cash flow and guys to sum it up i assume that Hermes with a current stock price of around a thousand bucks let's just go straight into trading view and then we can see that so guys here we are at trading view and currently Hermes is trading at around 1370 1350 depending on how it stands as of right now is trading at that price and what we can see there has been a sell-off in recent days but i assume that is simply an anomaly or a normal thing in the market because we can see we had a really steep increase from october to mid-november and it's totally all right that a that a stock s or like hermes does drop here and therefore a certain amount of money or a certain amount of percentage of the uh recent all-time high so i'm totally fine with that i'm as of today and today is the 20th january 2021 no uh, 2022 no shareholder of hermes because i'm waiting till that correction is ended or till i can see that the Hermes trade share is definitely going up again uh, then I will buy more shares of Hermes or I will establish a position in Hermes I'll let you know in my Sunday stocks and option talk videos whether I uploaded uh, whether I bought some shares or not so guys that's basically it i hope you liked the video one last thing we can do is take a long-term look at hermes and well i mean i think that picture is amazing to end the video because it basically says everything you need to know about the stock i really hope you liked the video it would mean the world to me if you subscribe or leave a comment and let me know whether you are shareholder of hermes and stay on for the last part of the luxury series number four. See you soon guys. Bye.